everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, seven, and five. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you have come to the right place. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below the video. In today's video, I'm super excited because I am doing my very first Blossom and Root review. They were kind enough to send me this in exchange for my honest review, especially in this moment of time, this very difficult moment in time. I think it is so important that when we teach history and social studies to our children, that we teach it from a well-rounded perspective, that we teach it from a river of voices, as the author of this curriculum says, and not just a babbling brook of a few, that we try to encapsulate the experience of the many as opposed to just the winners. Because as we all know, the winners write the history books and some of the nuances of the stories can be lost in that telling. I am planning on studying American history with my rising fifth grader next year. And I am so thankful to Blossom and Root for creating a curriculum like this that is full-bodied and speaks to the complicated history of America with integrity. As you can see from the introduction, it is a completely secular history unit. This is volume one. The History of the United States um, by Blossom and Root is designed to be a three volume set as far as I understand. And this is the first part of it. In the introduction, Christina Garner, the author of this curriculum, says very beautifully, for my daughters, I wanted history not to be the babbling stream of a single and dominant narrative, but a river of voices. And that is where the title comes from. Uh, it's really easy to present history as a matter of fact um, line of different events. I think it is much harder to look at our history, particularly when we are proud of our nation and discuss the hard stuff when our children are small. And this curriculum definitely gives you a vehicle to do that in a respectful and honest way. So as I said earlier, I had not used any Blossom and Root curriculum before, partially because I have so much curriculum that we already use, and also because something about the scheduling of it was confusing to me. And she does a great job of talking about how this can apply to different families and how you can adjust it and tweak it to work for the type of family you are. Because as we all know, some of us are more classical in terms of homeschooling. Some of us are more Charlotte Mason. Some of us want to read living books all day long. Others of us want to do sort of minimal reading and more worksheet or notebooking pages, etc. And all of those things are okay and addressed in this curriculum. So she gives you a initially different types of schedules that you can do. You can do the traditional schedule of 36 weeks. You can do a traditional schedule in 18 weeks. So you do two lessons per week in that sense. You can have a relaxed schedule where you just do this to learn this and it has nothing to do with what grade level or how many years it takes or what have you. And then she talks about how to plan out each lesson. So she advises you to look over each lesson, decide which books that are offered and video links you would use, which projects you'll do, and then go ahead and highlight them, look through the activities considered, and figure it out. She does not recommend bulk planning for the year. I do think a highlighter is helpful as you go through it. And she definitely walks you through how to use such an open-ended curriculum. So each lesson begins with a lesson foundation, which is referred to in the section for the minimalist, and you'll see. And that talks about the spines, the optional readings, any kinds of video or website links, and the notebook prompt that is included. Then you have a variety of activities, projects, more video links, and optional websites, and additional reading that she provides. That is up to you if you wanna look into them or not, is really up to how much you wanna delve into American history or that part of American history at any given point. Then you have step three, which is recording and reflecting. You can do this through oral narration or written narration, depending upon the skill level and desires of your child and the way your homeschool works. She definitely encourages going off grid, following your rabbit trails, falling off the schedule if necessary. It is a, way of framing out your study without dictating your study, if that makes sense, right? When we start homeschooling, we think about who are we and how do we want to address this? 
Um, there's the lesson foundation for the minimalists. There's also lots of book options for the book basket folks. And then there's visual options like videos, etc. She emphasizes throughout that it's important to screen those videos ahead of time because some of them, especially in the advanced pathway, are designed mostly for high school students and above in terms of their content. There is several activities, as I mentioned, and some map prompts. So here she addresses again what I mentioned before about recording and documenting the journey through this curricula. You can do oral narration, written narration, scrapbooking. She also provides a simple book of centuries download um, that you can use. Uh, the way she does it, it has the dates at the tops of each page and it's really easy to add to a, a three ring binder without limiting how much you would put within any one time period. So there's three pathways that you can choose from. The gentle pathway is recommended for grades K through two. The standard pathway is for like elementary and middle grades three through eight. And then the advanced pathways is grades seven and above and parents. She has divided volume one of her American history study into four parts in this book. The first part is first European colonies and then the growing colonies the Revolutionary War, and then building the foundation for a new nation. And within each of these parts, you have a variety of lessons. They are not the same size, if you'll notice. So for example, part three includes lessons 19 all the way to 29, and part four is lessons 30 through 36. When you look at the book list, they are split out by the three pathways. So for example, if you're doing K through two, you would look at the gentle pathway, see the spines, and then look at the optional book list for your book basket if you are a book basket person. Again, these are more optional books for you and it tells you exactly where the uh, books are recommended during the study. So part one, part two, part three, part four, etc. And then there's the book list for the standard pathway. And if you'll notice, two of them are the same as the gentle pathway. There's two new ones here and then you have options for the Revolutionary War Spine. And I really like how she describes every option and why it might be suitable for one person or another. So for example, this one she says is one of the strongest candidates, but this one is recommended especially for grades five and up. For kids who love military history might really appreciate this spine. This is a picture book option. This is a video option, Liberty's Kids from PBS. So for your visual learners, the kids who probably don't want an additional spine to read. Then you have several optional books for the standard pathway. And again, the recommendations of when you would read these books. Here's the book list for the advanced pathway, which we will not be doing. And there is book list recommendation for parents, which I really appreciate because I, I enjoy learning alongside my kids so much. It has been the biggest boon of homeschooling that it gives me the opportunity to become a student again. So every section begins with an overview where it talks about at a glance there's going to be 10 lessons that start out with you know the first European colonies, the arrival of Columbus from 1492 to 1621. Um, it talks about the spines used again, the longer read aloud sections, the standard pathway, it sort of organizes your thoughts for you again. This might be what you had noted down before, but she's done the work for you, where she lists out the spines and the read aloud selections that you can enjoy. Each lesson follows a similar layout. So we'll look at the layout of the first lesson to get an idea of how it goes. Lesson number one is about native peoples of the Northeast. She does a little overview of what you will be reading about, what you will be learning about, how to compare and contrast it with what you might have read in the past. And then you can see here, she has barred out the lesson foundation and that is for the minimalist. So this is what you would probably definitely want to do to get the meat of this curriculum. If you again are doing the gentle pathway for K through two, this is what you will be working on and what you might choose to highlight. In my case, we'll be doing the standard pathway. So I would highlight this section and make sure that we check off these things reading the introduction to this book before Columbus, reading chapter one and chapter two from A Kid's Guide to Native American History, reading through themes of one through three of essential understandings on this website. So that is the core foundation of lesson number one. Now, if I choose to add in some books that correspond with this, I would go again to my standard pathway section, begin reading my choice of longer read alouds for part one which are listed at the beginning, right? So we would go back and find our read alouds. 
right here for standard pathway and select which one we're going to go with and start reading them. If we have a visual learner for gentle pathway and standard pathway, there are some links that are given to us for different stories. Here's singing, um, learning more about a particular person, an author, a documentary about Mohawk iron workers. So a huge variety of different visual things that we can add to this curriculum to make it more meaty, to make it more real to the students. I really appreciate how she splits it up into different pathways so that you can easily find like what might be relevant to you. At this stage, I probably would not go to the advanced pathway, but I may watch it myself and see whether it would work out for my kids or not. Then you have an activity section here, number four. So you choose the activities featured in chapter two of this particular book, including things like making a corn hustle, a family thank you list, play Walt Waltes, a dice game, make a stewed cranberry dish, etc. So she gives you that unit study feel um, with the greatest of ease. This kind of stuff has always intimidated me, putting this stuff together. I'm much more of a type A classical um, type of person when it comes to subjects like history. And I love that she makes it easy for me to do this. Like she After the activities to consider, she talks about the student notebook in section number five. So for all pathways here, you can choose one of the profiles from chapter two of the Kids Guide to Native American History, use a Google search um, or your local library to find a picture of them and to learn more about them. You draw a picture of them in your notebook and write about the important things they did or continue to do. So it gives you a way to record what you're learning to do that notebooking activity as well. And again, if your kids are smaller, you can just draw a picture, you can print out a picture, you can um, have them do an oral narration, etc. You do not have to be so wedded to the, the curricula that you feel like it's not working for you. I often think that that's one of the mistakes new homeschoolers make is that when they get a curriculum, they abandon it because it the things that are required of them are too hard. I encourage you to look at pre-scripted curricula like this as a tool for your own homeschool. What will work best for you? You have the permission to do those things and forego the rest. In the in the formatting of Blossom and Root, she fundamentally gives you that permission, right? By giving you the different pathways, the, the minimalist approach, the book basket approach, the visual learner approach. You do not have to feel like you have to do all of them. And nor should you probably, unless you're doing a full on unit study and you're devoting all your time to this. Take the time before each lesson to read through it, figure out what is relevant for your pathway that you're on, depending on the age and ability and inclination of your kids and decide how you want to go about it. Think about how much time it's going to take and fit it in in a way that it organically works with your homeschool. I love that she gives the the additional books for the book basket folks, because when you plan out your book basket, you can incorporate this in there as a as a puzzle piece, not as an additional thing that you have to do, but something that already fits into your homeschooling style. When you look at the additional videos and things, you can add it in as a puzzle piece on the day when you look at videos, when you hang out and do your handicrafts in front of the television and you watch science shows and you watch Nailed It and things like that, you can also fit in one of these YouTube videos, etc. So I really encourage you to try to look at unit study curriculums like this and work in different elements of it, weave it into your own homeschool rhythm. That'll prevent you from feeling like, oh, we didn't get through this lesson again today. We couldn't manage all of this stuff. And it'll prevent that overwhelm. So as somebody who's going into my fifth year of homeschooling, I really do advise you to weave in these pieces into your regular homeschool rhythm, your own unique rhythm. I'm going to flip through more of this curriculum, but you can see that even though it looks very text heavy, there's a lot of the text that you actually will not need. She's organized in such a way that it's really easy to find what matters for you. Look for your pathway. Look for whether you want to do the minimalist approach that week for that lesson, for that topic, or whether you want to go into your book basket approach as well. 
or if you want to incorporate all the videos or just some of them, etc. So she gives you an overabundance of resources for you to choose from. And it's sort of like going to a very well curated buffet. It's formatted very much the same way throughout. I love that she has a lesson on female patriots. Again, an area that's often ignored. And in part four, you have the overview again, building a foundation for a new nation. So here you're talking about the foundational documents of this country, like the constitution. African Americans after the war, that is an area of history that is seldom talked about in traditional history books. When you look at the student notebook, it's fairly slender and it's designed to be an open-ended notebooking book. So, when you open it up, you can see that every um, lesson is clearly marked. So native people of the Northeast, it gives you that assignment again, the notebooking assignment printed out for you and pages and maps for the activities that she's mentioning. In some cases you have a reproduced map. In other cases you have blank notebooking pages for the student's own exploration. I really like that she gives you the assignment at the top. So later when you save this, you can have a clearer understanding of what was being done. So this is A River of Voices by Blossom and Root. I hope this was helpful to you. I am so impressed with the work Christina has done here and I am so grateful that we have the opportunity to use such an inclusive curriculum to teach early American history in our homeschool. If you have questions about this curriculum, please be sure to include them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. As always, you guys, I so appreciate your time and I look forward to reviewing more things from Blossom and Root in the future because as someone who's always looking for more secular resources that are well researched and well thought out, I'm very happy to have had this opportunity. So thank you so much for giving me your time. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the very best day.